and hello, 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 and welcome to Cabin Fever Radio, where a group of talented actors and creators come together to stave off their madness and yours, and keeping us all entertained through dramatic reading of your favorite movies and TV shows, and we will have original content as well. I am your host, Mr. David Rano, and in today's episode, we are joined by a lovely group of actors and uh we'll name them off one by one first off bobby say hello bobby hello bobby (laughs) as well as marissa martin jessica m legreer steven cicerone with an n i remembered the n (laughs) <laughs> Mariah Hart David Coker Troy Medley and our newcomer Jess and I keep forgetting your last name what is your last name again Jess? Bernal there you go I can dig that welcome 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 <laughs> and uh, Today, we are going to do a dramatic reading of uh, something that we're all fond of. I hope. I know I am. And it's an episode of Friends <coughs> from the first season. And it will be the pilot named the one where Monica gets a new roommate. So welcome, everybody. How are you guys feeling? Good. 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 I'm ready to get on track and are you ready <laughs> yes yes so as far as our cast goes uh we have about nine no ten total characters correct i believe so sounds ish yeah if yeah. i'm not mistaken uh we do have uh uh steven playing ross we have David playing Chandler. We have Marissa playing Joey. We have Jessica playing Rachel. We have Mariah playing Monica, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we mm-hmm. have me playing Phoebe. That's going to be kind of <laughs> fun to play with. Um, and then we have Bobby reading our actions as well as playing who? Franny. Franny. And of course, we also have Troy playing Paul and Jess playing who again? I, I don't remember. I thought it was Franny, but I thought it was Franny too. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, she is Franny. <laughs> oh, you're the waitress, Bobby. Let me double check. This is the best part <laughs> of what we do. Is making sure that everybody is on board at all times. It's easy for me because I, you know, I just read. If you don't read it, I'm coming in and I'm reading it instead. That's what I do for each and every one of you. <laughs> I'm Monica. Yeah, you, you are pretty much reading the actions and the waitress and is it uh, waitress. Yes. See, yeah. that's the fucked up thing. I thought the Franny was a waitress. It's like, I'm so, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Yeah, so confused. Uh, the waitress comes in uh, at the beginning, and then uh, Franny comes in towards the second half. I understand. And as always, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you can see more links on the description as far as uh, what we're doing, as well as links to every single Instagram and our Patreon page, so you can support what we're doing and making sure that... Uh, we get fed and we could do this a lot longer and uh, just making it fun just for you guys. And we have exclusive content on our Patreon page. Other than that, shall we go right into it? We yes. shall. Sweet. So I'll roll right into it by reading uh, the title. <coughs> so welcome to Cabin Fever Radio Novellas. In today's episode, we are reading friends episode one of season one the one where monica gets a new roommate scene one central perk all present except rachel and ross 
There's nothing to tell. He's just some guy I work with. Come on, you're going out with the guy. There's got to be something wrong with him. So does he have a, a hump, a, a hump and a hairpiece? Wait, does he chalk? The others stare bemused. But just because uh, I don't want her to go through what I went through with Carl. Oh. Okay, everybody relax. This is not even a date. It's just two people going out to dinner and not having sex. Sounds like a date to me. Cut to, but stay on the same set. All right, so I'm back in high school. I'm standing in the middle of the cafeteria, and I realize I'm totally naked. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Had that dream. Had dream. <laughs> then I look down, and I realize there's a phone. There. Instead of? That's right. Never had that dream. Nope. All of a sudden, the phone starts to ring, and it turns out it's my mother, which is very weird because she never calls me. Stay on the same set. Ross has now entered. Hi. This guy says hello. I want to kill myself. You okay, sweetie? I just feel like someone reached down my throat, grabbed my small intestines, pulled it out of my mouth, and tied it around my neck. Cookie? Carol moved her stuff out today. Oh, let me get you some coffee. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, don't. Stop cleansing my aura. No, just leave my aura alone, okay? I'll be fine, all right? Really, everyone, I hope she'll be very happy. No, you don't. No, I don't. To hell with her. She left me. And you never knew she was a lesbian? No, okay. Why does everyone keep fixating on that? She didn't know. How should I? Sometimes I wish I was a lesbian. Did I say that out loud? All right, Ross. Look, you're feeling a, little, a lot of pain right now. You're angry. You're hurting. Can I tell you what the answer is? Ross gestures his consent. Strip joint. Come on, you're single. Have some hormones. I don't want to be single, okay? I just, I just, I just want to be married again. Enter Rachel in a wedding dress that she starts to search around the room. And I just want a million dollars. Rachel? Oh God, Monica, hi. I just went to your building and you weren't there. And then this guy with a big hammer said you might be here and you are here, you are. Oh, can I get you some coffee? Decaf. Okay, everybody, uh, this is Rachel, another Lincoln High survivor. Um, this is everybody. This is Chandler and Phoebe and Joey. And you remember my brother, Ross? Hi, sure. Hi. They go to hug, but Ross umbrella opens and he sits deflated again. A moment of silence as Rachel sits. The others expect her to explain. So you want to tell us now, or are we waiting for four wet prizes? Oh, God. Well, it started about a half hour before the wedding. I was in the room where we were keeping all the presents, and I was looking at this gravy boat, this really gorgeous Limoges gravy boat, when all of a sudden, sweet and low, I realized that I was more turned on by this gravy boat than by Barry. And then I got really freaked out, and then that's when it hit me. How much Barry looks like Mr. Potato Head. You know, I mean, he always looks familiar, but anyway, I just had to get out of there. And I was start and I started to wonder, why am I doing this? And who am I doing this for? So anyway, I just didn't know where to go. And I know that you and I have had have kind of drifted apart, but you're the only person I knew who lived here in the city. Who wasn't invited to the wedding. Um I was kind of hoping that wouldn't be an issue. And now we cut scene two, Monica's apartment, all present again and watching a Spanish soap on the television. No, I'm guessing that he bought her the big pipe organ and she's really not happy about it. Daddy, I just, I can't marry him. I'm sorry. I just don't love him. Well, it matters to me. 
Oh, uh, she should not be wearing those pants. I say, push her down the stairs. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Daddy. Listen to me. All of my life, everyone has, has always told me, you're a shoe. You're a shoe. You're a shoe. You're a shoe. And today, I just stopped and I said, what if I don't want to be a shoe? What if I want to be a, a purse, you know, or, or a hat? <clears throat> No, I'm not saying I want you to buy me a hat. I'm just saying I am a, it's a metaphor, daddy. Uh, you can see where he'd have trouble. Look, daddy, it's my life. Well, maybe I'll just stay here with Monica. Well, I guess we've established you staying here with Monica. Well, maybe that's my decision. Well, maybe I don't need your money. Wait, wait, I said maybe. Cut, but stay on the same set. Rachel is breathing into a paper bag. Just breathe. Breathe. That's it. Just try to think of nice, calm things. Raindrops and roses and rabbits and kittens. Bluebells and sleigh bells and something with mittens. La 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 la. Mm, all better now. I helped. Okay, look, this is probably for the best, you know? Independence. Taking control of your life. And hey, you need anything? You could always come to come to Joey. Me and Chanda live across the hall. And he's he's away a lot. Joey, stop hitting on her. It's her wedding day. Mm. What? What, like there's a rule or something? The, the, the door buzz. Chandler Don't do it. that again. It's a horrible sound. Uh, it's, uh, it's Paul. How's him in? Who's Paul? Paul the wine guy, Paul? Maybe. Wait, your not real date tonight is Paul the wine guy? He finally asked you out? Yes. Oh, this is a Dear Diary moment. Rach, wait, I can cancel. Please, no. Go. That'd be fine. Are, are you okay? I mean, do you want me to stay? Uh, that'd be good. Really? No, go on. It's Paul the wine guy. <laughs> Monica goes to get it. It's Hi, Paul. come in. Uh, Paul, this is uh, everybody. Uh, everybody, this is Paul. Hey, Hello. Paul. Hey, Paul. The wine guy. The wine guy. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch your name. Paul, was it? Two seconds. Oh, I just pulled four eyelashes. That, that can't be good. <laughs> so, Rachel, uh, what, are you, uh, what are you up to tonight? Well, I was kind of supposed to be headed for Aruba on my honeymoon, so nothing. Right. You're not even getting your honeymoon. God. No, no. Although, Aruba this time of year, talk about your big lizards. Anyway, if you don't feel like being alone tonight, Joey and Chandler are coming over tonight to help me put together my new furniture. <clears throat> yes, and we are very excited about it. Well, actually, thanks, but I think I'm just going to hang out here tonight. Okay, sure. Hey, Phoebes, you want to help? Oh, uh, I wish I could, but I don't want to. This program has been brought to you by the coronavirus. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Scene three, Ross apartment. The guys are assembling furniture. I'm supposed to attach a brackety thing to the, to the side things using a bunch of these little whim guys. I have no brackety thing. I see no whim guys whatsoever, and I cannot feel my legs. Chandler and Joey have apparently finished a bookcase, but there's a bit left over. What's this? I have no idea. Joey checks Ross is not looking and dumps it in a plant pot. Done with the bookcase. All finished. 
This was Carol's favorite beer. She always drank it out of the can. <laughs> I should have known then. Raw. <laughs> Raw. Let me ask you a question. She's got the furniture, the stereo, the good TV. What did you get? You guys. Oh, man. You got screwed. We cut to Monica and Paula eating in a restaurant. Oh, my God. I know. I know. I, you know, I'm such an idiot. I guess I, uh, I should have cut on when it started and uh, going to the dentist four or five times a week. I mean, when she started going four or five times a week, I mean, how teeth can you clean? How, how, how clean can your teeth get? My brother's going through that right now. He's such a mess. How did you get through it? Well, you might try accidentally breaking something valuable with hers. Say her... Uh... Legs? <laughs> That's one way. Me, I, I, I went for the watch. You actually broke her watch? We cut back to Rachel in Monica's apartment. She's talking on the phone and pacing. <clears throat> Barry, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I know you probably think that this is all about what I said the other day about you making love with your socks on, but it, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. It's about me and I just... His machine cut me off again. Anyway. Now we cut to Ross's apartment. You know what the scariest part is? What if there's only one woman for everybody? You know, I mean, what if you get one woman and that's it? Unfortunately, in my case, there was only one woman for her. What are you talking about? One woman? That's like saying there's only one flavor of ice cream for you. Let me tell you something, Ross. There's lots of flavors out there. There's Rocky Road and Cookie Dough and Bing, Cherry Vanilla. You could you could get them with Jimmy's or nuts or whipped cream. This is the best thing that ever happened to you. You got married. You were like, what? Hey, <laughs> welcome back to the world. Grab a spoon. I honestly don't know if I'm hungry or horny. Stay out of my freezer. Now we're going to go back to the restaurant with Monica and Paul. Uh, ever since she walked out on me, I, uh... What? No, it's... Ooh, you want to spell it out with your noodles? No, it's kind of more of a fifth date revelation. Oh, so there's going to be a fifth date. Isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there is. What were you gonna say? Well, um, ever since she left me, uh, I, uh, I haven't been able to perform. Sexually. <laughs> oh God, oh God, I, I am sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, being spit on is probably not what you needed right now. Um, how long? Two years. Wow. Glad you smashed your watch. <laughs> so, uh, you still think there's going to be, um, a fifth date? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. We cut away from Monica lying to Paul to Rachel watching Joni Loves Chachi. <laughs> The TV says, Jody. I, Jody, take you, Charles, to be my lawful husband. Do you take? Oh, see, but Joni loved Chachi. That's the difference. Cut to Ross. Grab a spoon. Do you know how long it's been since I've grabbed a spoon? Did the words Billy, don't be a hero, mean anything to you? You know, here's the thing. Even if I could get it together enough to, to ask a woman out, who am I going to ask? We cut to Rachel staring out of her window. Scene four, Monica in Rachel's apartment. Rachel is making coffee for Joey and Chandler. Well, that's going to be our intermission right there. Ah, hello. Back to another commercial. This program has been brought to you by the coronavirus. As well as Patreon. So feel free to support us there so we can survive the coronavirus. <laughs> but yeah, so far it's been really good. Uh, I thought we were going to go a little bit... Uh, uh, 
longer in time, but just by looking at it, it's been a pretty good read so far. What do you guys think? Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that, uh, Robert. I, I didn't know if that was. T I'm sorry. I'm no, I didn't know on the TV thing. Yeah, I, I was like, was no, I just thought it was unassigned. I was like, oh shit, do it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. No, yeah. no, I think I'm the one. That, sorry. Was was that assigned, David? Uh, I, I can't recall. Actually, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think that yeah. was part of. Uh, so, yeah, like, it was, no, it was. A, it was a good. It was a good. Uh, it was a good go, Troy. Yeah. So, <laughs> good instinct. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because there's being that one line. You know, just doing yeah. some of these, it, it can get a couple lines slipping through the cracks. You know. Oh yeah, stuff like TV says. Yeah. <laughs> there's a couple things that have cracked me up already. So. Yeah. No, it's been pretty funny, especially on. Uh, a couple where it's the whole ensemble just chit chatting one after the other it makes it mm -hmm. sound really good. Are they watching us now? Are we being streamed right now? Yes, we are, we are live and we oh. have some uh, viewers on Facebook and on YouTube. Oh. <coughs> and feel free to chat with us, uh, audience, if you if you want. I uh, get to watch our intermission. <laughs> yeah. Or well, again, it's just a quick little intermission as we continue going from one scene to the next. Are we ready to go? And uh, is everybody good to go? Yep. If we are good to go, uh, if you want to start that off again on scene four. Scene four. <coughs> Monica and Rachel's apartment. Rachel is making coffee for Joey and Chandler. Isn't this amazing? I mean, I have never made coffee before in my entire life. That is amazing. Congratulations. And while you're on a roll, if you feel like you gotta make like a Western omelet or something. Although actually I'm not really not I'm not really that hungry. Enter Monica from her room. Good morning. 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 Enter morning. Paul from Monica's room. Morning. Morning, Paul. Hello, Paul. Hi. Paul, is it? <laughs> Monica and Paul walk to the door and talk in a low voice so the others can't hear. The others shunt Monica's table closer to the door so they can. I had a really great time last night. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll talk later, okay? <laughs> that wasn't a real date. What the hell do you do on a real date? Shut up and put my table back. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, kids, I got to get to work. If I don't input those numbers, it doesn't make much of a difference. So, like, you guys all have jobs? Yeah, we all have jobs. See, that's how we buy stuff. Yeah, I'm an actor. <laughs> wow, would I have seen you in anything? I doubt it. Mostly regional work. Oh, wait, wait, unless you happen to catch the reruns productions of Pinocchio. Look, Geppetto, I'm a real live boy. <laughs> I will not take this abuse. You're all right, I I I'm sorry. Once I was a wooden boy, a little wooden boy. Exit Joey and Chandler. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Did you sleep okay? Talk to Barry. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> I can see that. You look like you slept with a hanger in your mouth. I know. He's just so... So, d do you remember you and Tony DeMarco? Oh, yeah. Well, it's like that. Oh, with Felix. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you in trouble? Okay. Okay, I am just going to get up, go to work, and not oh. think about him all day or else I'm just gonna get up and go to work. Oh, look, wish me luck. What for? I'm gonna go get one of those job things. Exit Monica. Scene five, Iridium, just Monica, working. Enter Franny. Hey, Monica. Hey, welcome back, how was Florida? You had sex, didn't you? How did you do that? <clears throat> Who? You know Paul? Paul, the wine guy? Oh yeah, I know Paul. <laughs> you mean you know Paul like I know Paul? Are you kidding? I take credit for Paul. You know, before me, 
There was no snap in his turtle for two years. Oh. Cut to the gang minus Rachel at Central Perk. Of course there was a line. Why? 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 Why would anybody do something like that? I assume you were looking for an answer more sophisticated than to get you into bed? Is it me? Is it like I have some sort of beacon that only dogs and only severe emotional problems can hear? All right. Come here. Give me your feet. <laughs> Just thought he was nice, you know? I can't believe you didn't know it was a line. Monica pushes Joey off the sofa and enter Rachel with shopping. Guess what? You got a job? Are you kidding? I'm trained for nothing. I was laughed out of 12 interviews today. And yet you're surprisingly a B? You would be too if you found John and David boots on sale. 50% off. Oh, well, how you know me? They're my new, I don't need a job. I don't need my parents. I've got great boots. Boots. <laughs> How do you pay for them? Uh, credit card. And who pays for that? Um, my father. Now let's cut to the gang at Monica and Rachel's. Sitting around a table, on the table are Rachel's credit cards and a pair of scissors. Come on, you can't let off your parents your whole life. I know that. That's why I was getting married. Give her a break. It's hard being on your own for the first time. Thank you. You're welcome. I remember when I first came to the city, I was 14. My mom had just killed herself and my stepdad was back in prison. And I got here and I didn't know anybody. And I ended up living uh, with this albino guy who was like cleaning windows outside mm -hmm. port authorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he killed himself, and then I found uh, aromatherapy. So believe me, I know exactly how you feel. Uh, um, the word you're looking for is, anyway. <laughs> you ready? I don't think so. Come on, cut, 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 it sucks. You're going to love it. Cut to the same set. Monica, Rachel, and Ross have just finished watching a film. Well, that's it. You going to crash on the couch? No, no. I got to go home sometime. You going to be okay? Yeah. Hey, Mon, look what I just found on the floor. What? That's Paul's watch. You just put it back where you find it. Oh boy, all right. Good night, everybody. Stomps on the watch. Mm. Oh, no. Sorry. No, 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 go. No, you have it, really. I don't want it. Split it? Okay. Okay. You know, you probably don't know this, but back in high school, I had a, um, a major crush on you. I knew. You did? Oh, um, I always figured you just thought I was Monica's geeky older brother. I did. <laughs> oh, well, listen, do you think, and try not to let my intense vulnerabil vulnerability become any kind of a factor here, but do you think it would be okay if I asked you out sometime, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay, um, maybe I will. Good night. Good night. Exit Rachel to her bedroom. Enter Monica in a dressing gown as Ross is leaving. See ya. Wait, wait. What's with you? I just grabbed a spoon. <laughs> we get the closing credits, and during the credit scene, we go back to Central Perk. I can't believe what I'm hearing here. I can't believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> what? I, I said you had a... What I said... Would you stop? Oh, what was I doing it again? <laughs> Would anybody like more coffee? Did you make it or are you just serving it? I'm just serving it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll have, I'll have Definitely. 
Kids, new dream. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm Liza Minnelli. <laughs> we end. Fade to black. No one told you life was gonna be this way. <laughs> Job's a joke, you're broke because you don't have a job. On the next episode of Friends. I know, right? That was that this, was this would if, if Friends was still going, they would definitely do a coronavirus episode. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Quarantine. The one where the one where everybody's quarantined. They would call it something like that. Hey guys, no yeah. technical difficulties today. Man, yeah. that's I was thinking about that the whole time. As you cut out saying that. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. No, <laughs> no but th this actually came out pretty smooth for the most part. And uh, again, on the time wise, what? We did a five minute intro and it's barely 532. So but we're getting better at these for sure. You know? Yeah. This was a shorter one too, though, don't you think? This was well, this was shorter, and it was pretty much a lot of just back and forth. And there's also good. somebody brought it up before we went live tonight that there's a bit on this that that's physical humor that it's that you that you would do differently if we were doing this in front on a stage or in front of cameras, and it would slow things down because we would be looking at the TV and reacting and and, and waiting on certain things. So there's a lot of that that's coming into play here. You also have to combine that, guys, with, I don't know if you're aware of it, but if you ever go back and look at a half an hour show <clears> in <throat> the 60s and 70s versus a half an hour show today, they ran about 24, 25 minutes compared to about you know 19 to 22 minutes today. So th there's an additional three to four. We're losing three to four minutes of content. This should be three to four pages shorter. Yeah. Yeah, and again, that, that that's on the... Uh on the technical side of, of doing a production versus doing a reading. But uh, overall, it, it was pretty smooth. I liked, I liked the energy for sure and the voices and even just the actions that we can hear in your tone, which made it really good. Mm -hmm. And the story is pretty funny. But yeah, thank you everyone who has been watching. And again, feel free to check out Cabin Fever radio.com and you will see all the other episodes that we've done thus far this is episode four of our first season doing these uh dramatic readings hey david what have we landed on man do we want to end this first season with six yes uh, uh that, that was kind of my game plan to do six and then uh go from there on to our <coughs> will be season two and uh, I'm pretty sure for well, once we get to that point, we can add a little bit more flair to the intros to the the overall look of the show. Because, again, we're getting better every single time that we're doing it. And if we're getting better at this rate, uh, season two is going to look amazing. And everybody who is watching, go like the Facebook page, follow us on Instagram. Um, on our website at cabinfeverradio.com. You'll see it's all getting kind of broken apart there where you'll start seeing different actors here from the screen will have their own little nooks and crannies mm -hmm. with their own shows and things like that. On uh, Wednesdays, starting this week, I'm going to be doing uh, comic book reviews called uh, the Cabin Fever Comic Book Corner. So come on down and watch that. On Fridays, I always do a, a live stream called the uh, Wild Love Weekly where I kind of rant and rave about music from the 70s 80s 90s and tie it into my own life yes so there's a there's a, a bunch of stuff available for free through our website and starting today too we put out a coloring page the coloring page should be up i know yeah. it's on the social media but a good downloadable copy will probably end up on the website as well because we're gonna have an online coloring book for you guys out there yes uh, so so again all the all that information is going to be on the description below of the video or on Facebook, uh, wherever it is that you're watching us. And uh, again, feel free to follow us on Instagram for more updates. Uh, follow us on the Facebook page and just uh, follow us around in real life. You know, uh, all of our Instagrams are going to be at the bottom. 
Uh, my life is so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <Life> is... <laughs> so it, it's like uh, you can follow us as long as you stay six feet away. But if you want to follow us in real life, that's also <laughs> a possibility. I hope. I mean, day. I'd be careful if you're going to do that to me. But <laughs> <laughs> soon enough. An air hug. An air hug. <laughs> yes. Just high fives from far away. Have Have any of you guys done any air hugs? No. I did an air hug with a friend. She gave me a microwave about three weeks ago, and I went to pick it up. And when I got there, we stood six feet apart and did an air hug. Uh, then I got the microwave and loaded it up. And when I was leaving, we did like an air hug. Yeah. So it was very strange. How close? <laughs> how close were you when you did that air hug? Six feet two inches. <laughs> exactly. Five hey, point six feet. Yeah. We measured. It hey, David, uh, are we allowed to ask technical technical questions now? Because I have uh, a question. For uh, right now, uh, yeah, this is still in the conclusion. Uh, we're going to switch over to our post show right now. Oh, no. So, uh, <laughs> a, a, again, for everyone who's still listening, thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and if you have any feedback, you know, feel free to comment and let us know on how we can improve. But we do have what is known as the post show, and it's going to be exclusive to Patreon supporters. So please go to patreon.com slash cabin fever radio. All the links are in this description. And then uh, you can hear the behind the scenes side of what we do. Okay. So thank you again. And uh, we're signing off. If you want to play the friends. Pew, pew. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold we on. can uh, sign off with a little with a little mood music. There we <laughs> go. Are you ready? Go for it. <laughs> Thank you, and you've been watching Cabin Fever Radio Novella. Signing